how's everybody doing? Third show of White History Month. We're going to do a, a White History Month comparison, and I'm going to show you that not all the White History is good, and I'm okay with that. That's not what we celebrate. We don't celebrate the Bidens. You know, we celebrate the Trumps of the world. So I'm just going to give you a comparison to um, Trump's, accomplish accomp bleh, bleh, bleh. Trump's accomplishments and how the world was going under him as of January 2021 compared to Biden and, and his current economy. And you got to remember that these accomplishments from Trump, a lot of those include the beginning of COVID when everybody was freaking out and losing their dang mind. So, <laughs> and he still came out on top. Homie Biden ain't looking so hot. And then we'll check out, you know, the other, we'll dabble into the rest of the Biden family, you know, in comparison to the Trump family. And we're just going to look at two different versions of white history, great white history and horrible white history. <laughs> The whole Biden family. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. Well, we're just gonna have to be careful what we say and how we tread on this Hunter situation. Let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Trump accomplishments as of January 2021. This is from WhiteHouseArchives.gov. Unprecedented economic boom before the China virus invaded our shores. We built the world's most prosperous economy. America gained seven million new seven million new jobs, more than three times government experts project projections. Middle class family income increased nearly six thousand dollars, more than five times the gains during the entire previous administration. The unemployment rate reached three point five percent, the lowest in half a century. Achieved forty months in a row with more job openings than job hirings. Nice. More Americans reported being employed than ever before. Nearly 160 million jobless claims hit a nearly 50-year low. The number of people claiming unemployment insurance as a share of the population hit its lowest on record. And incomes rose in every single metro area in the United States for the first time in nearly three decades. Nice. That sounds pretty good. How about de delivering a future of greater promise and opportunity for citizens of all backgrounds? So, yeah, this one we talk about, you know, the minorities. They were all employed at higher rates than ever. Uh, unemployment rate for women hit the lowest. I don't know, you know, how great of a thing that is, but 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 the liberals like it, I guess. So, you know, that's why we're going to tout it. Lifted nearly 7 million people off of food stamps. Nice. Poverty rates for African-Americans and Hispanics reach record lows. Yeah, we. I said that income inequality fell for two straight years and by the largest amount in over a decade. All these good things. All these things are really good, you know. Brought jobs, factories, and industries back to the U.S. We were working on a wall. Our immigration. Where's the immigration? Hit record stock market numbers. Whoa, oh, that ain't going too hot no more. How's your stocks doing, ladies and gentlemen? How's that Bitcoin looking? I guess if you got in Bitcoin really early, you're still doing all right. But if you got in kind of late, then uh, it's a mess. Uh, record setting economic comeback by rejecting blanket lockdowns, tax relief, all these things, all these good things. Massive deregulation. Instead of two for one, we eliminated eight old regulations for every one new regulation adopted. Provided the average American household an extra $3,100 every year. <laughs> Who doesn't like that? Who doesn't like that? Instead of crashing the, the dollar and... Um, Raising the price of everything. So, you know, White History Month, we just want to we want to show love to Trump. Trump was one of the, the best presidents that we've ever had. Honestly, I don't know if he was the best because I haven't been involved in politics that long, but he's pretty good. Everything tanking. Yes, sir. Raymond. Raymond 11. Yes. Everything tanking. Gas was a dollar thirty. <laughs> Yo. Uh, oh, man. I used the work van for a personal uh, personal use, so I had to um, replace the gas that I spent, and I was like, 30 bucks should do it. <laughs> 30 bucks was like five gallons, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not even over a quarter tank, but I think that's about how much I used was about a quarter of a tank. He's been around the clock. Uh, he also... He also botched a COVID response. Right. He got us a vaccine that you guys needed so bad to continue with your life. He got it in, in what, five months when all the projections were two to, two years to 15 years? Yeah. Good job. Uh, oh, oh, you mean when he when he, when he he was ze called xenophobic because he shut off the travel? Which is what everybody said, well, he should have shut off the travel sooner or later. But when he did it, they called him xenophobic. Is that the botching that you're talking about, Rich? Because... um. I think you're, you're wrong again. 
as usual. Streamline energy efficient regulations for American families, businesses, including preserving affordable light bulbs. <laughs> That's cool. Enhancing the utility of shower heads and enabling greater time savings with dishwasher. One thing I'll say about the light bulbs in Florida, in Tampa, Florida, they replaced all the street lamps with new light bulbs, energy saving light bulbs. And within a year, they all turned purple. So I was when I was down in Tampa visiting my family and I was driving through Tampa and you're on the interstate, all the neighborhoods, the street lights are purple, like like a black light, not not like a black light because it doesn't. um. You know how black lights like make things glow and make things look a certain way. They weren't black lights, but they look kind of like black lights. They were purple. And um, so I was like, what is up with all these purple lights? So I Googled it. It turns out there's currently they they spent all this money replacing all the lights. And a year later, they got to do it again because they were faulty, energy efficient lights. And so they only stayed the right color for less than a year. And then they all turned purple. Fun fact. Anyway. <laughs> Historic, uh, historically black colleges and universities fundings, right? Gave more than uh, anybody. And and he didn't just give it to them for, for the time being. He gave it to them for the next 10 years. So they didn't have to keep coming back and asking constantly, which is funny because those same historic, historically black colleges and universities threw Trump under the bus. So I think he should have cut that off. Ah! And then what's her name? Winston Sears, Winston Sears gets into office and she's like, we need to give more money to the historically black colleges and universities because my candidacy won't be about race and I'm a good black woman Republican. Well, then if you're then why are you doing the same thing Trump already did? And then they threw him under the bus. You should be like, nah, you guys are cut off. Winston Sears. How about that? She's a rhino. Plug in that successfully rolled back burdensome regulatory outreach. Yep. Jobs are doing better. Small businesses were doing awesome instead of having riots in all the cities where all the small businesses get shut down property taxes get raised and people can't afford to pay their employees because we got to put the minimum wage at 15 dollars, right we got to raise the minimum wage like that's gonna help anything uh lord baby frogging it up i'm on strange schedule as well so yeah this thing just goes on for on and on and on and on forever guys and i think trump has it memorized because this is what he goes through when he does his speeches American energy independence. What's that like? You guys remember what that was like? Do you remember what it was like when we were getting our own oil here? Like, like Lord Lucas said, the gas was cheap. You guys remember that? Man, it was fun. Man, it was great. I wish I had a vehicle then because <laughs> I didn't. I had a van for, well, no, that was, yeah, that was the end of Trump when I got my van. But yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a vehicle during uh, most of Trump's presidency, but now I got a vehicle. I got two. Well, I got the work van, which isn't mine, but it's here. And then I got my truck, but I can't even afford to, to drive the dang truck. <laughs> <laughs> then was the days. Yes, sir, Lord Bibby. And it wasn't even that long ago. Just imagine. It was only like three three years ago. This has been a long three years, guys. It's been a long that. three years. Forgot about, forgot all about Prime Day. Let's check out that sweater on the right. <laughs> I know, look at this ad, boys. Anyway, so what we were saying is, I found a Trump. I'm looking for chat to see if anybody's gonna confirm or deny what I heard, because I feel like when this first happened, they said cardiac arrest. Now, yeah, we got free shipping on these sweaters, by the way, guys. Um, key points: Ivana Trump, the first ex-wife of President Donald Trump, died in an accident as a result of suffering blunt impact injuries to her torso, the New York City Office of Chief Medical Examiner said. The office ruling came a day after Ivana 73 was found dead in her Manhattan residence. The New York Attorney General's office said it had agreed at the request of lawyers for Donald Trump and his two children to postpone depositions scheduled for the next week in light of Ivana's death. So she was found dead in her residence, 73 years old. So she's pretty old. Um, I think the women life expectancy is actually like 74, somewhere between 74 and 76. Somebody can Google fact check me on that if you'd like. But um, I know it's higher than men. I think men are like 70 and women are like 75. So she, you know, she had a long, full life. She was rich. She married a powerful man. She did everything, you know, that a woman wants to do. <laughs> she had children, great children, successful children. All the children, all the Trump children are successful. This is how you can tell a measure of a man by what his children become. Um, you know, 
Trump's children are all successful business people. I think one of his daughters is a lib, but she's successful. She got money. And of course, you know, you could say, well, that's general generational wealth. And I'm sure, you know, they had that privilege, which I don't believe in white privilege. Of course, that's stupid. But I do believe in money privilege. If you got money, you have you you are privileged. And if you're born into a wealthy family, you're going to have more access to to things than poor people. And um, so Trump's kids all turned successfully. But we have other examples of young men who, who had rich, successful, powerful successful successful you know they can get elected as president i don't know if you'd count the presidency as successful we have other examples of young men who uh who just don't turn out so well and so i got a little video clip for you in comparison let's take a look at the biden family jill biden everybody Hey, calling them breakfast tacos. Hey, wait, wait, wait. What's this? What is this? Hold on. How did this get in here? What the? Yo, wait, wait, wait. I don't know how this got in here, guys. I didn't do this. Oh, we don't have the audio. We don't have audio. What is this? How did that get in there? King, King what was Salman, that? Greeted by the <laughs> Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Here you see the men exchange a fist bump as they never named your kid Hunter a short time ago. It's a t the men exchange a fist bump. Wow, as they greeted pound each it, other pound it, Biden. Time ago. <laughs> Cap the upper age limit for presidency. The understanding Let's start this over because I didn't have the audio plan for this part. This community, as distinct as the Bogodas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio. The breakfast tacos. <laughs> she called Hispanics the breakfast, breakfast tacos. tacos. Rich, how do you feel about that? Here in San Antonio. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well, we don't want to watch that. <laughs> anyway, don't worry, guys. There was no nudity in that. I scrubbed through it. I made sure. And I didn't even play the whole thing that I did. It was actually two minutes. I just cut out a lot of it just because I know that that's... I got a Facebook ban. Little housekeeping news. I got a 30-day Facebook ban for sharing this video, that I, that Hunter video that I just played. And um, the funny thing is I shared two of them. And I got banned for 30 days for one of them for going against community standards. And I challenged it. I said, I don't agree with the community standards. And they got back to me. They said, because of COVID-19, they're limited in the people who can address the, the challenges to the bans. And so, taxo is how we say it. <laughs> um, so they didn't say that they declined my appeal. They said they can't get to it because of COVID. There's not enough people working there apparently, which it's all done by an algorithm and a robot anyway. So that's total nonsense. But the funny thing is, the funny thing is you guys can go to my Facebook right now. And this 10 crack commandments one that I was just playing is still on my Facebook. It's still there. There's no picture. It just says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then it has a white thumbnail and you can watch this video. It's still on YouTube. They haven't taken it down yet. So I think the person edited it up pretty well so that there's no underage girls. Now, there are prostitutes, and you definitely see them doing some thangy things, but you can't see anything. And, um, you know, if anything, there, there's more hunter nudity than, than the prostitutes. There is a little bit of, you know, you can tell thin things are happening, but not necessarily porn or nudity. But all those girls that I just showed are of age. And a lot of them, we know who they are. Um, we got, there's not, we as in not, not the dreaded conservative show, but there are people who are looking into this and they have teams looking into this and they're finding these girls and trying to get them to, to talk, but they, they've probably been paid very well. They've probably been paid very well. Now in comparison, as I was saying with Trump's family, with Trump's kids, 
if if Donald Trump Jr. puts out a bad tweet, we hear about it on CNN, MSNBC, everywhere for months, at least a month, at least two weeks, at least two weeks. We're hearing about it nonstop. And uh, whereas when we get information like this about our current president's son, you can't even tell people about it. You can't even show people this. You can't even get the word out because they shut you down on the social media platforms. Uh, so Ivanka's dead. So, so yeah, you know, that was my clip. Let's take a look at the Biden family uh, to start off uh, from Bre Breitbart. Bank of America forecasts a recession this year with economy shrinking 1.4%. Forecasts a recession? What do you mean? We're not already in one? What are you telling me? Like, what kind of psychic... What kind of psychic forecast is that? <laughs> They're brilliant. These are experts, guys. They're forecasting a recession. Who would have thunk? I feel like we're already in like a triple depression. But Bank of America has downgraded its expectations for this economy this year to include a mild recession. You downgraded your expectations for the economy to include a mild recession. Yeah, I think, I think that's already happening, guys. Just saying. Uh, Jill Biden calling everybody a taco. We saw that in the clip calling calling Rich a dang taco. She's so racist, dude. She's so racist. Uh, Jill Biden. Now the first lady, Jill Biden, has apologized. She apologized for calling you a taco, Rich, as unique as breakfast tacos. It's time to pause from the latest manufactured right wing at outrage. <laughs> this is MSNBC. This is so garbage. The latest manufactured right wing outrage and a man <laughs> and examine. How about the latest <clears throat> manufactured left wing destruction of the world? How about that? Uh, slightly problematic, dumb leftist word. Pale in comparison to years of even more dangerous rhetoric against the community, still fighting back against lazy stereotypes. Yo, she said it, not us. We're just calling attention to it. What the? MS, MSDNC is garbage. Um, lawmakers respond to Joe Biden's taco comments. Republican Hispanic lawmaker criticized First Lady Joe Biden's comments comparing the diversity of the Hispanic community to breakfast tacos Wednesday and several sta statements made it exclusively to National Review. Uh, National Review reached out to all sitting Hispanic members of Congress asking if they had response to Joe Biden's comments. A host of Republicans responded calling the comments disgraceful. Um, I heard somebody say that Joe Biden was only only being damage control for the Hunter issue and for and for Joe, that she was basically told to say that to divert the attention away from the fact that 4chan hackers outsmarted foolish Hunter Biden using specific tool to recover files from Apple cloud backup site. Listen, guys, if you're sleeping with prostitutes and recording it and you're selling crack and weighing crack and recording it and smoking crack and recording it and playing with guns when I don't, I think he's a felon or something. I don't think he's supposed to be messing with guns. Didn't he get some sort of gun charge in the past? Maybe I'm wrong about that. But anyway, you're going to be holding your gun by the trigger naked with a prostitute in the bathtub. Um, maybe don't save it to the cloud. This is the smartest guy that Joe Biden knows, and he doesn't know how to use a dang thumb drive. You can't get a dang flash drive, bro, to save your, your, your videos. And if this is what he records, what about what he doesn't record? What's too bad for Joe Biden, I mean Hunter Biden, to record and save it to his iCloud? Dumbass. <laughs> you don't got no VPN and no dang flash drive, buddy. You leaving every laptop at a, at a pawn shop? This guy, and this is the smartest guy that Joe Biden knows. Wow. <laughs> Using a tool called iPhone Backup Extractor, the anonymous, not anonymous 4chan hacker outsmarted Hunter Biden by getting an easy access to his personal information from Apple, Apple Cloud's backup site. The leaks went viral on 4chan, which claims to have access to more files that have huge amount of personal data of Hunter Biden. Right. They have bank records. They have his Venmo stuff, his PayPal stuff. They have everything. So they know they know what they got. It is verified. Is 100% verified Hunter Biden. Those videos are not fakes. Those are Hunter Biden. And, you know, the 4chan guy's doing it, doing it, and doing it well, as usual. But you know who the best troll in the history of the world is? The most epic, legendary troll in all of the universe. This guy right here. This guy. Look at this guy. This guy is the troll master. Bro, this guy said, F you, dad. I don't care if you're the president. I'm still going to do crack and sleep with prostitutes. Get some. <laughs> anyway, 
Biden sells oil to China in the middle of U.S. gas prices. This guy is awesome. Remember when Donald Trump warned Americans that Joe Biden would be selling out America to enrich his family? In the middle of a historic gas cri crisis, Biden has shipped one million barrels of oil from our strategic petroleum reserves to China-owned Sinopec, which his son Hunter is part owner of through his private equity firm, BHR Partners. Interesting. Interesting. Oddly enough, we got a foot ad. Ew, dang, I didn't even see that. Yo, get that off my screen. That's a nasty, funky foot. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, man. So, so yeah, we're in a gas crisis. Biden is sending our oil, our emergency strategic petroleum reserves to China. And Hunter is taking a pay cut off of that. Now, we know Hunter doesn't know how to do anything. Hunter's the smartest guy Joe Biden knows, but he's also dumb as a box of rocks. So he can't run these things. He ain't running these things. He's just sitting back getting paid. He's a shell company for Joe. He's a shell company for Joe Biden. Google I is watching. Sound is bad because the welding machine is running in the back. Dang them feet. What's this? Uh, Lord Luca and the Gets. We'll check. Um, yeah, so you can't unsee, unsee, unsee. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so he's sending our, our oil over to China. Um, what else he doing? What else? We're, we're doing the Biden watch. We're com comparing Biden to Trump. Uh, he visited the Saudi Arabian guy. That's why when we showed you the fist dap, the fist dap, because it's COVID. You can't be shaking hands. You know, back in the old days, you saw it already, Jess. Oh, is it, uh, is it the piggies? The little piggies? That selling of the oil is treason. Yeah, definitely. It's a bigger deal than it seems. Um. And it's also just further proves that that this gas crisis is is being manufactured by the leaders of not only our country, not only our empire of lives, but also a global effort to destroy the economy of America and just destroy America. What's this? This lady looking kind of naked. <laughs> Sorry about that. I can't get the ads to go away. How do they give me an ad with a naked girl on it? Almost naked. She got. She got her arm over the booby. Anyway, uh, meetings between leaders of important nations are usually worthwhile, even if they yield no immediate results. But there are exceptions. One was Neville Chamberlain's 1938 Munich meeting with Hitler. Another, President Biden, sit down with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman last week. The president's 24 hours in Jeddah were dominated by photos of his fist bump with the de facto leader of the kingdom Mr. Biden had labeled a pariah. Things went downhill from there. Mr. Biden insisted that in front of the entire U.S. and Saudi delegate delegations, he had labeled the crown prince the killer of Jamal Khashoggi. Saudi minister of the state, Adel al Jabir was quick to say he didn't recall hearing that. When Mr. Biden was asked if the foreign minister was telling the truth, he said no, implying that a key Saudi official was a liar. So, and, by, and they, we have it on video. Biden was kind of talking tough about this guy, but then when he went over there, He's like, no, I didn't say nothing. That was that was misinformation from so and so. So he's calling the key Saudi official to the Saudi prince a liar while he's lying. This is what Democrats and liberals do. So assuming Rich is not a Groyper troll who's actually far right, more far right than all of us, assuming Rich is being somewhat genuine and he is a leftist and like a socialist libertarian uh far left guy, then we know from experience that Democrats are liars. Democrats are liars. You can't believe anything they say. You can't take them at their word. You can't take them and believe they didn't just get a stock photo off the internet to, <laughs> to show you where their house is. <laughs> They're liars. They're deceivers. Demon rats. Okay, let's move on. So he screwed it up in Saudi Arabia. Big surprise, big surprise. We had... The Hunter Biden thing, and then they deflect with with fist bumps to the Saudi prince and Jill calling people tacos. No Pride Month in Saudi Arabia. I I would probably agree. What Biden's making a mess overseas? Loud, yeah. I mean he he didn't really make a mess. Other well, other than he just made us look like a bunch of punks. He made America look like the so he just made us look stupid for for having this guy running our country. He just made us look weak and stupid. Can't even shake a man's hand. When I did door-to-door -door sales, I would knock on somebody's door, and as soon as they open, I'd say, "Hey, my name's Josh. I'm here with the NCA contest this year. Nice to meet you. What's your name?" And I'd shake their hand. If they got scared and they recoiled and they didn't want to shake my hand, 
I'd be like, all right, have a good day. And I move on to the next house and knock the next door. Because if you are scared, if you're not, uh, if you're not honorable or manly enough to, to shake someone's hand when they offer it to you, if you're afraid of them, then you're definitely not going to buy anything from them. So, and I feel the same way about, about people in the world. If I, if I go to shake your hand, like a man, especially if we just played like a card game or something when the game's over and I go to shake your hand, say good game. And, and you won't shake my hand or you give me this little limp wristed, sweaty palmed, fishy little, like little sardine limp, little floppy handshake. Come on now. If you try to give me a fist bump when I'm trying to shake your hand, <laughs> that, that, that doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Biden shake limp AF. I bet. I bet he does. Scoffers, they will be plenty in the end days. Learn that in church Sunday. Hey, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, um, the end days. I, I don't have a whole lot of news and stuff to cover, so we're going to do a little entertainment news. We'll talk about Thor. Talk about. All right, uh, guys, now. that's it for this clip from the Dreaded Conservative Show every Monday night, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Come by the live show and check it out, guys. Join the chat. It's always fun. And you guys can subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you know whenever I go live, not just on Mondays, but for the random game streams throughout the week. Those are a lot more chill. You guys can come hang out with us. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. All the good stuff, guys. I got a video. I got a playlist. You can check those out. Until next time. But I'll catch you later. Peace.